with me, Christina Laster, and National Parents Union. I hope that you're all well. I hope you're all thriving. Hello, America's Beautiful Children. We love you. And so today is Thursday, and on Thursdays, we have physical education with Coach Robinson. But before, hey, Coach, how are you? I'm hanging in there. How about yourself? You know, I'm doing the same thing, you know, just um, really want to go on vacation, you know, just like spend a couple days, um, no phone calls, no emails, just taking in fresh air and right. somewhere on the beach, you know, sounds about nice to me. But um, I'm here today and, you know, we always talk about moment by moment, day by day. Um, and what that looks like, just taking um, one day at a time, not trying to figure out what's going to happen tomorrow, not trying to um, live in yesterday, you know, there's a lot of baggage, things happen, we make mistakes, all kinds of stuff. Um, but I wanted to give you guys some encouragement, because, you know, yesterday I was feeling very challenged um, emotionally, and you know, I was thinking all these thoughts um, and just about, you know, looking over some stuff with, with situations that I had um, encountered with people. And I started thinking, you know, every single time I uh, think about this through my day, I bring those situations and people in the room with me. Um, you know, even though they're not physically there, emotionally, I am dragging them with me and that's a lot to carry you know and so what 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 is the best way that i could just um be in the right now in the moment um and i because i'm a woman of faith um i turn to scriptures to help me often and i wanted to share with you you know just my encouragement and inspiration um and i hope that it encourages you so i went to philippians 3 um, and on verse 13, you know, um, Paul is writing to Philippi and it says, brothers, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead. I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Jesus Christ. And so, you know, we can't bring, always bring all this baggage into um, a new day with us. We have to forget what is behind often and press on. Um, I hope that that encourages you, like I said, um, and that you feel inspired. Don't carry all that weight everywhere you go. Thoughts, conversations with people, um, mistakes, you know, um, that can really load you down and really stop you from thriving um, and have your mind spinning. So just be free. And I hope that, you know, that helps you. Hey, Coach Robinson. Hey, hey, hey. So that is very powerful words you gave this morning uh, from my word, you know. Um, I'm really glad that you touched on that because what does that look like in PE? You said don't carry the weight around with you, right? Well, damn. right. In PE, same thing. You know, you're not going to thrive. You're not going to be healthy if you're carrying around all that weight. And I think a lot of times we as individuals, we don't even look at some of the things that are in front of us that can help us in all aspects of life. Right. A great analogy to say, you know, in life, you're carrying all this weight with you everywhere you go and you have all this baggage and you're not able to move forward because you have all this weight. Well, you got to lose some weight some spiritual weight, some mental weight, some real weight. I mean, this COVID. This COVID, COVID weight. <laughs> now that I uh, have been carrying around with me all day. <laughs> I, I wish that I could forget about that and leave it behind. You know, But you, we can make changes day by day, moment by moment, you know, even in that sense. But you know, when you're talking about forgetting what's behind, so a lot of parents right now are having to uh, look at what the districts are sending out as far as education is concerned. And you're looking back and you know, we don't wanna look back. We wanna look forward, wanna keep it going. 
And um, today we, um, we took a break. I didn't have um, my students log in because they finished school last week on the 4th. And so I'm like, you know, we're Congratulations, done. students. You made it. And <laughs> parents too, right? Yeah. That's you made it. it. At the beginning of this, <laughs> everyone thought it was going to be panic central, right? Which it was for a period of time. Right. But I said, we're going to get through this and we, we're here. Right. And, and then when we arrive... We want to go back and, and we do want to go back and just review some of the things that you were able to accomplish as your new physical education teacher uh, for your students and your home parents. I want you to just take a break, breathe, go back and see what things worked, what things didn't work. And then while you're, um, we're moving on into the summer, you want to transition from more of a structured PE to more of a family time where you all are picking activities together. It's not so much focused on uh, content, uh, physical education content or standards. It's more of, now let's go pull weeds outside. Let's go plant a tree. Let's go plant some flowers. Let's go, you know, mow the lawn together. Let's go sweep, you know, leaves. Those type of activities are still physical activities that it's gonna be disguised fitness and giving yourselves a break. You don't want to forget about the 60 minutes a day of physical activity, but this is the summertime and you want to enjoy these moments with your kiddos and then be mindful of all the things that you did do over these last 12 weeks and then tweak it. How can you make it better? How can you, you know, move forward? Because as we move forward, we don't want to take some of the mistakes as parents, you know, teaching our kids at home that we didn't do it like the teachers did it. Parents, let me give you a secret. We do the same thing. <laughs> you know, and parents are really the experts um, on their children, right? And their abilities right, right, right. Um, on their modalities of learning. They mm -hmm. are the primary educator. Um, and so parents, you know, give yourselves a pat on the back right. um, nice. because you did an amazing job and you, 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 you know, I'm sure you put your best efforts forward. Also, I would like to appreciate um, family caregivers, right? Um, that network is so important and vital um, when you're raising a child for them to be able to have other, you know, people, whether it's your grandma, your abuela, your abuelo, your aunt, your tío, right? Um, even community members that you um, consider you know, family that are there for the course, that help you, that encourage you, um, that bring inspiration and say, you know, I realize that you're carrying a heavy load and I want to help. How can I help, right? Mm -hmm. I really want to thank all of you um, who make this happen every day. You're the real heroes here, you know? Absolutely. And, you know, as we move forward, when you think about, um, you know, who all was involved in the educational process while we are on COVID, this should not change as you move forward into traditional schooling. Um, if we go back traditional schooling, don't lose sight that it's a, a family affair when you talk about educating your child. And that goes from, you know, just hitting the front door, speaking to the um, office staff, to, you know, making sure that you see, you know, that the school is clean. That would be the custodial staff, right? Physical education. Talk to your family, I mean, your, uh, your education families and community, your education community, and keep that momentum going because parent engagement is like, and parent and family engagement is like, like, man, it's like, you know, uh, peanut butter and jelly. They go together. They go hand in hand. And your child will continue to thrive if you're there. Now they've had all this time with this at home and parents had to jump in and learn how to teach these different areas. And then PE, you know, it's really crazy. Don't lose sight of what you've done over these past couple of weeks. It should continue because my concerns as a parent and as an educator is what will the achievement gap look like when the students go back? I know we're physical education on Thursdays. I'm just very concerned myself about the achievement gap, let alone 
I know in our district, students were not able to complete the physical education or the physical fitness test, the fitness gram test. And I'm like, we don't have data on that. We're not going to know where our kids are, are physically. So, you know, you just want to make sure that you're keeping track, you're keeping in touch and, you know. You know, and so as we are approaching summer, some places a little hotter than others. Right. I live in one of those places, right? Sunny, sunny California, right? right. Um, and so, you know, make sure that you take some of the principles and core values that we learned during this time, um, you know, hydrating, you know, nutrition, right? Um, mm -hmm. Utilizing um, good nutrition as energy, as fuel. Uh, mm -hmm. I, you know, I aspire to be the 10,000 to 12,000 step a day walker. Oh, that's great. Let me see. Right now I am at, um, 5,578 steps. Oh, that's and, awesome. And I just have a little tracker right here, you know. Um, yesterday, uh, it was 9,600 steps. And so I guess I didn't get those additional 400 in before midnight. Um, but I'm going to try to do better today. <laughs> just awesome. taking the recommendation of the American Heart Association and what I know makes me feel good, you know? And so I know that like my feel good spot for um, just exercise um, and walking and staying fit is 10,000 steps or more a day, you know? Um, whatever you set your goals to be and what works for your body, um, just start somewhere. I mean, that could be 3,000 steps a day. That could be 5,000 steps a day, but make sure you stay hydrated. Mm -hmm. um, make sure that you are using nutrition um, as fuel and energy for your uh, body. We also have the ideas and concepts, core values, principles of lifelong learning, right? How are you teaching your children um, as lifelong learners? And what they learn now will, will follow them through the rest of their life. So, right. you know, just to recap. Right. And also in the, um, to recap, we talked about plans, activities. Even though uh -huh. you're on summer break, you still want to have those planned activities so that you're intentional. So, you know, you're still looking at some of those foundational skills that you want the lower level um, elementary students to be um, grasping and learning and continue to practice so they can have mastery. You want to make sure that even the older kids are, are having some type of activity that it may not be a planned um, PE class activity, but that you're intentional in, for example, hopscotch, you know, that will be reinforcing some of those foundational skills. So when uh, students are going to be playing in sports or as they get into team activities or team sports, that they're not lacking in that area. Cause that's a big deficit for me as an educator. There's a big deficit for students in the older grades that just don't have that foundational base. So that you want to be intentional in planning your activities out. You also want to keep track of your activities. You, you may not do it necessarily on a PE log while you're on the, in the summer uh, months, but you want to at least get your calendar out and kind of jot them down because you're going to notice the sleep patterns of your students are going to be different over the summer. And you really don't want kids to get too far away from the normal day because once school starts, I can foresee that it's going to be so much back and forth because we don't know what's going to happen with this COVID situation that you want to be consistent in something and physical activity is going to um, help all the, the whole child. You're going to be able to sleep better at night. You're going to be able to focus more. You're going to be able to get some of those, um, the wiggles out and, and uh, get those muscles moving and, you know, working on your body. It's, like, again, it's not a, it's not a, um, it's not a, it's a race, but it's not a sprint. It's a marathon. So that's one more thing that, you know, you want to make sure that you remember. Yeah, my son, and I, I know you guys saw me look away. 
um, is working on getting his wiggles out right now. Remember, I, I used to have the birds chirping in the background, and I said, man, we're going to have to do a For the Birds segment, seriously. Well, um, I put the birds outside, you know, so they, well, they're in their little, you know, um, atrium, and I, I let them chirp and sing with the other birds, and all of a sudden I hear music coming from my left ear here, a piano sound. Um, and I'm trying to figure out how can you take a shower and play your keyboard at the same time? So <laughs> multitasking at its best. You know, multitasking, working those uh, muscle groups, stretching. Um, Fine gross motor skills. Fine gross motor skills. Right, hopefully washing up. <laughs> Anyone with sons gets exactly what I'm saying. So yeah, that's, yeah, thank you. Oh my goodness. And you know, um, also to recap some of the things we talked about is YouTube, you know, use what you have as a resource and um, look for anything that can keep your family, number one, safe, because not everybody's going out and because they've lifted these uh, uh, restrictions and things are starting to open back up, utilize YouTube to find, or just the internet in general to find, you know, excuse me, different activities that you haven't tried before. And um, really get into that because as we move forward, we don't know where we're going to be in the next three or four months. And you want to make sure that you're not getting that, um, you know, you're not bored because that's what happens with students or especially athletes. They play a sport, 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 and then there's no break in that sport. Like on off seasons, they're doing you know, travel ball, they're doing this and they get a burnout. And so what burnout is, is that you just do something all the time and you don't give your body or your mental um, wellness a break from doing the same activity. So if you're, if you're exercising every day and, and a lot of people were using exercise as their form of PE, you don't want burnout. So be creative, be creative and, you know, try new things and use the internet. It's there. It's there. You know, we were just talking about those internet resources the other day, um, sharing some with a, a father that was um, seeking to um, get his daughter's planned physical activities. Shout out to my brother, Johnny Karina. Um, you know what I'm talking about, brother. And so I was saying like, oh, tell him, you know, about the uh, video that the kids really like, but I don't know why they like this one so much with that pink monster. <laughs> the pink monster. Abby. Abby, yes. So you can look up Abby and I'll tell you it's child friendly, child approved. Right, right. And I think it's the stimuli, you know, it's being able to visualize this crazy monster and she's doing all these stretches and all these exercises. So why not? I can do it too. And it keeps the kids' attention. It's it's funky music. My students, when they hear it come on, they're like, uh, my older ones, uh, you know, but they it grows on them. But yeah, Abby, the stretching song. So when you see the stretching song on YouTube, Make sure you see the pink Abby. I don't know what the name of the channel is, but they have, <laughs> they have about. I'm not looking it up. I'll tell you that, but I'll let the parents definitely look it up if they so choose to do so. And I, you know, like I said, it's child friendly, child approved. But that is one way to get your children um, to stay motivated, to have those planned physical activity times, you know, and not slack off. It doesn't have to always, you know, change up routine, you know, even like me as a daily walker, um, I try to change the routine of like, sometimes I'll put five pound ankle weights on, do squats, you know, all kinds of like different stuff, just so my muscle memory won't be um, stuck in the same thing. Right. And then I reach these plateaus that are like discouraging and all this other stuff. And so, you know, just switch it up, but just make sure that you are, um, you know, instituting those principles um, in, in that activity that you're, that you're seeking um, to measure the outcome on. Absolutely. And stretching. Stretching is, is, is just as important as the, the um, actual activity part. A lot of times we just go out and send our kids out 
And, you know, I always get slack when my kids are stretching before like going to the park and people would look at me with these crazy looks. But so far, you know, I have sons. No one has gone to the hospital for an accident because you want to stretch. You want to make sure your body is well ready for that activity. And if you're walking after two weeks, Miss Christina, you need to be running or jogging. You know, I'm 42 years old, and uh, the way my knees are set up, <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to be, maybe I will take a speed or brisk walk. I was going to say, oh, speed walk. Right, right. And, and just... making sure you're moving those arms, because uh, the, it's, it's, it's a known fact. However fast your arms are moving, your feet will follow. Right. Biology. So... You always hear, um, you always hear coaches, especially you ran track, didn't you run cross country? You know, that is a little known fact about me. Get <laughs> <laughs> out the bag. Um, I, I did run in high school. Um, I ran track um, distance. I was a distance runner. I also did cross country. Of course, that's distance. Um, the hardest part of that basically a lot of people ask me like isn't it hard to run like three to five miles a day and i was like the hardest part of that was um basically me getting my breathing right, my breathing right. you know um down to the point where you know i'm not dizzy i'm not my chest is not hurting um and i can continue to run without stopping right like just being able to run long distances without stopping Right, right. And I think that's um, why some of the kids, when we do uh, the mile or we do uh, run days, they're not really motivated because they're looking at what's in front of them and they get tired so fast or they're thirsty because they haven't trained themselves. And again, remember, it just takes three days to get out of shape. So we want to be mindful parents that as we move towards summer months and we're moving toward a real true break, that we're, we're still staying active and we're not allowing our kids to just kind of linger too long because you don't want their bodies to um, forget, you know, because you work so hard to get to a point we've been, I think if, if you're still logging today would be day, goodness. Oh, this is day like 200, 230, 232, 232. Yay, we made it. Oh my goodness. So if you're still doing your log, you know, you want to keep, keep it up, keep tracking that information because again, you want to take those practices into next year's school year because we don't know what it's going to look like. So just be proactive and get those videos. And if you want to reach me, you know, you're feel free to reach me um, on Facebook at uh, Kaylee Robinson um, or, you know, J Robinson PE class at Gmail. Thank you so much for spending and dedicating your Thursdays to give this vital information on physical education, planned physical activities, nutrition, health, wellness, lifelong learning. Um, I, you know, before we close, I do want to announce that I did share a, a link into the live feed. Um, you know, this is also going to be, you know, viewable later as it is recorded. Um, there is, for you that have younger children, uh, not even elementary age, there is an Elmo town hall, CNN, um, and you need to, be, you probably will, might want to view that. It is, Elmo and his dad um, are going to be discussing protesting and racism on Sesame Street. Um, I'm so glad to be able to share that information with you. So, you know, you might want to tune into that, see um, which ways um, they're encouraging humanitarian ideals and just um, explaining it out of in a way that younger children are able to understand. And so <clears throat> is there a final word you want to share? We will, oh, of course, be back next Thursday. Right. Um, but, you know, just to... Take us in our weekend. Tomorrow's Friday. Yay. Right, right. Tomorrow's Friday. Just hang in there, parents. Again, be intentional in all that you do and how you shape your child because, again, you are your child's molder of their dreams. 
and you want to make sure that you're standing the torch, I mean, you know, standing with that torch for them in all aspects of their education, you know, especially with physical education being a content that's not always looked at as a respected area. I'm telling you, physical education will be the foundation of a lifelong learner and someone that's willing to go the mile, you know, and run that marathon. I don't really have any um, just, you know, bullet points, but just be intentional. Be intentional yes. that's all you do. Be intentional. And intentional, consistent, and persistent, right? Um, that is a recipe for success. And so, you know, thank you for watching. We here at National Parents Union, of course, offer ourselves for feedback, questions, concerns, assistance. You can uh, contact me, Christina, at npunion.org, and I am here accessible to answer your questions or um, accept feedback. You have been watching Managing Day-to-Day -Day with me, Christina Laster, and National Parents Union. Again, I hope you're all well. I hope that you all thrive. Goodbye, America's Beautiful Children. We will see you again tomorrow, same place, same time. Be sure to check out other things that we feature during the day. Uh, tomorrow is Friday, Ask the Counselor Fridays. And so that's sure to be a blast as well, learning how to just challenge ourselves into uh, better uh, mental health and wellness um, and overcoming some things. And so in that, when you're an overcomer, you will have the victory. Thank you for watching. See you later. Bye-bye. Thanks, Coach. All right.